Hello. Welcome back to another pen talk. Thanks for tuning in. This video is going to be about a pen that's been around for a while, but I recently saw some interesting options on eBay. Yes, there's many acrylic barrels that go with the pen. This pen has gold or 14 karat gold nib, and with the barrels you can put any color you want on it. Assuming you can find the barrels, they seem to be going fast. If you buy the pen with the colored acrylic barrel, it's substantially more money, which is one of the strange anomalies of eBay. So I stopped on this fourth barrel because I just find it to be very interesting, very nice. And all the barrels work well with this silver cap. I think all the ones I saw on eBay had a silver cap. Yeah, a little tag here that tells you you have a fine nib. Not certain what other ones it comes in. But, you know, for not a lot of money, I was able to put together this pen. And here's what the barrels look like without being on the pen. They just screw on and off the section. Yeah, this is a nice orange acrylic with some interesting little chatoyancy to it and below it is another common on the orange variety of uh, that acrylic with the black stripe in it. I wanted a blue one or a green one but uh, they were sold out and when I did buy one the seller said can't sell you that when it's gone but I can give you an option so that's how I ended up with these uh, this one here. You know, this is reminiscent of a, of a 51, but it's slightly smaller, and we'll compare it a little bit later. You know, your standard uh, fully hooded nib, you know, with the feed there. I haven't taken this apart. I have a tool coming, so we'll see how that works. As I mentioned, these barrels just unscrew. Uh, and one of them, the threads was a little bit rough, but I used silicone grease on all of these barrels, and the threads at uh, those metal threads at the top of the section and now everything screws on and off easily. Yes, it's an aerometric filler, but you can see that ink level in there. So that was uh, five pressings and I was able to fill it up pretty much near the top, which is, which is good. I've written a lot with this pen and I've been very, very happy with it. And we'll change personalities by putting on this yellow barrel. The pen came without any packaging except this uh, classic uh, plastic sleeve. You know, it's labeled Hero, and I find that this is interesting little statement to put on there. Product of Hero, prohibit to imitate. Um, interesting because this pen imitates a pen. So here is the 601 the Hero 601 compared to the Wingsung 601 with the piston draw filler compared to the 618 which is just a piston filler pen. These two have a variation of the Parker Aero Clip while well, this one does not so that's one of the things that's different about this pen versus the one that it looks like. So they all have hooded nibs and a very similar section. They all post extremely well. The 618 is a screw on and off cap where the two 601s are a pull off cap. I find the clear section in the Wingsung 601 to be quite unique and quite interesting. The 618 is a daily writer for me in some of its forms and it's continued to be consistently well. And the 601 has again that classic section and that section is actually longer on the Hero one that it is on the Wingsung 601 or the Wingsung 618. So that makes it interesting to hold. I mean, obviously you can hold any of these pens anywhere because there's nothing really to stop your fingers from finding the place that they're most comfortable with. So here's a Hero next to a very vintage Parker 51. This is a girthier pen. This one's a little longer. 
You know, they, uh, one of the things that the 51 was known for was that jewel in the top of the cap where the 601 kind of mimics that with this uh, machined cone of metal. At the, at the other end, there's a metal cap that, that mimics the one at the, at the top of the cap at the end of the barrel where the 51 has your classic uh, cigar shaped. They both post well and they post about the same length. But what we see is a difference in the section. You know, that is a unique section there on the 601, which is much longer. It doesn't really have a traditional clutch ring like you have on the 51, but the hooded nib is similar. But a little bit more of that nib sticks out, which I think lends itself to a nicer writing experience. You may ask the obvious question, Chris, how does the Hero 100 compare to the Hero 616? Well, here's the 616. I've had a number of these. I bought a pile of them like a lot of us probably did years ago. They're a buck. Here's a typical eBay auction for the pen. Considering that's a dollar and this one is substantially north of $15 and could be as much as $80, is it worth it? Well, I never did a review on a 616. A lot of people have, and I don't think anybody really liked the pen. Um, it d does definitely does not feel the same quality as the Hebrew 100. I mean, I think there's a significant difference, which uh, a lot of people talk about, you know, a cheap pen versus a quality pen. And even though I don't like to use those terms, my memory card filled up when I was discussing cheap which is a term I don't like to use. Inexpensive, I think, is a more appropriate term. Affordable is an appropriate term, but to me, it's an example of getting what you paid for. I mean, is the 616 worth a dollar? Yeah. But if you're buying a pen to use day-to-day -day and reliability, and if, and if you're into the feel and, and quality of the pen, then the 100 definitely is worth the price of it. And that 14 karat nib writes as well as any hooded nib I've ever used. So that puts it into a, a nice class. So, you know, you need to take into uh, mind, you know, what your budget is. Like, depending upon your level of comfort and what you want to spend for a pen, what's really great is we have a beautiful range to select from. So these are about comparable in length, and they're the same diameter. This cap will fit on to the 616 cap and the 100 cap is interchangeable but just the quality of the materials used the feel of the pen it's just like a different pen even though technically made by the same company and have a lot of similar traits in regards to the design here is a plastic section versus a metal section and that's one of the main differences. The other thing is the threads are different, so you can't take the acrylic barrels that I use for the 100 and fit them on the 616. You know, the aerometric filler looks a little nicer. This one's branded with the 100 and the Hero, or the other one just has some generic branding here. So overall, the 616 is not a pen I could recommend, and the 100 is. So what I need to put in, I've decided to use Like a Fire. It's a nice, highly concentrated ink. It's a spill that I made there. You know, it's one of the Robert Oster inks that I really enjoy. I enjoy all of them. This cap has a very good feel to it. There's a fair amount of resistance as you push it in and then it seals. Uh, the nib is doesn't dry out. You know, that's one of the nice uh, advantages of a hooded nib and especially a nice cap that seals well. I would generally write with this posted. Uh, the weight feels fine in the hand. It's very well balanced. It is really a pleasant pen to hold. Reminds me of the Aurora Vintage 88. And you can hear the nib on the paper, but it is a fine nib, and 
I uh, expect Fine Nibs to give you some feedback, but it's smooth. I've written a number of pages with this pen, and it's just been a great performer. Um, you know, one of the things that the 51 design was very comfortable. So now we have to rate this pen. And I'm going to go out on a limb here. I'm going to give it a 9.1. So I know some people don't like hooded nibs. Some people don't like aerometric fillers. But I look at this as a writing instrument. And as a writing instrument, it's excellent. It doesn't leave too much on the table. You know, it's very well made. Very comfortable. The nib is very uh, consistent. And a great writer. You're not going to get flex out of it, but, you know, sometimes when you're doing writing, you know, taking notes or, or just writing per se, and, and you really just need a dependable writer, then this is right in that wheelhouse. One of the other things I really like about this nib and pen is it's a wet writer. I'd let it set uncapped for a few minutes. That's why it had a little bit of a hard start. But that's very easy to lay down a really nice patch of ink. And it's like a fire is definitely an intense blue. So this is wetter than any 51 that I've used. And that's one of the reasons why I enjoy it. So uh, thank you for watching. Thank my viewers for recommending this pen to me. Um, I just enjoy it. I enjoyed it from the first time I looked at it to, to writing with it, uh, to changing the barrels out. It's just, it's just been a pleasure. So it's been a great writing experience. And may you have many great writing experiences. Explore this wonderful world of pens, nibs, inks, and paper that we find ourselves in. This is the end of this video for now. Until the next one, bye.